Guys, in this video, we've got a radio controlled nitro racing buggy. So we're gonna unbox it, then we're gonna build it, then we're gonna take it racing and see how well I can do with it. And then we're gonna give it to my friend Mick Craddock. He's helped build and maintain a lot of European championship cars and even world championship cars. And we're gonna let him set it up and go over it all, make sure that the car's 100%. And then I'm gonna race it again and see how well I can do. So here's the kit and we have to build it. And then we've gone for a Pico engine. Here's the exhaust, perfect pass servos, and a Samwa radio. Now I could bore you and go on about all the specifications and all the techno babble, but in Instead, I'm just going to put a link down below where you can get all that information from and also where you can buy it all from. All right, let's go. So back in the day, I used to race 1.8 Rallycross and my first buggy that I had was a Mugen MBX5 with a Nova Rossi engine. Now, I got it from Models in Motion, Stuart Wilcox, and I put his setup on it. He looked over the car after I built it. I built it exactly the same to his World Championship car spec. So when I took it racing, I used to race it at a place called 3A Race way and at that place I used to win a lot of A finals come second and third quite a lot I used to do really well then I decided to sell that car and I got myself a lossy eight I built it and I had no one to help me set it up so anyway I built it to what the book said I took it racing and I went from winning A finals with a Mugen becoming last in every race with the lossy so when we build this car show here it's gonna be interesting to see how the car performs with me setting it up and I haven't got a clue about setting up cars every time I touch a car it just seems to make it worse. It'll be interesting to see how well I do and then give it to my friend Mick Craddock, let him go over it, let him tune it all, set it all up and then take it racing again and see what the difference is. I really think the difference is going to be day and night, you know, it's going to be from a well set up car, you could be top of the field, poor set up car, bottom of the field. I, in my opinion, anyone that's got half an idea of driving an RC car could probably do really well and win a lot of races at, at local clubs and stuff. But if the car set up bad, then anybody's got no hope. Jeez, that is tight in that one. Hopefully the professionals weren't looking when I just did that. So here we have a shim that we have to put onto the differential. And the idea of that is just to shim it so that you get a nice mesh. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose neither. And why is that not going in there? What? What's, what? What? What's going on here? Oh, if you look here, look, it hasn't got this piece. Now that is slightly a little bit tight, but I remember Mick Craddock saying that he built them a little bit tight because once they bed in, it should be perfect. Uh oh. What happened? Come on, in you go. Get in your hole. So here I'm assembling the steering rack. And we've got to make sure that it all moves perfectly freely. And it does. Next up, rear end assembly. More rear end parts.
So this is just some grease that I put into a syringe. And now we can fit the rear end to the chassis. And now we can fit the completed front end assembly onto the chassis. By the way guys, every time I'm doing these up with the Ugga Dugga, afterwards I go in with the hand wrench and just make sure that they're tight and to do the last little bit, because otherwise if you just rely on the Ugga Dugga, it could be too loose or you could strip up threads. So here I'm assembling the center diff assembly. Next, shock absorbers. So here I'm just putting a little bit of silicon oil onto the O-rings just to lube it all up a little bit. Next, we've got to put in the shock oil, and I haven't got those ones, but I do have those ones. So we've got to pour the oil in, a little bit into the cap, then we've got to take this little bleeder screw out. Then we have to pump the piston up, the oil comes out, the screw back in, and we should be good to go. I don't know how far you're supposed to leave this out. I think it's all the way in, so that's how we'll do it. Then all those bubbles in there, we have to wait for them to all come to the top. Yeah, look, there's loads in there, look, and they're taking ages. So I'm just going to leave that to chill up here for a minute. And while that's going on, I can get the other ones ready. Right, been 10 minutes. So now we can put in a little bit more oil and then put it all together. Now, now it's going to get messy. Push that in. All the extra oil should come out. Then we put this bleed screw back in and that should be it done, hopefully. It wasn't actually that messy. Oh, that feels beautiful. Oh, guys, I can't get these things on without ripping them. I can't get it to go over that. I tried doing it with this thing here and it just... That'll do. Next, time to fit some radio gear.
Here I'm fitting these beautiful, perfect pass servos. If you want to know where you can get them from and the car and everything else in this video, link down below. So that's the chassis almost ready to go. Next, we've got to put the engine in. We've got to put the clutch on there. We've got a few linkages to do. Wing, body, and ready to rip. So here we have the clutch assembly. So next, we need to tighten up the flywheel. And for that, you need to lock up the engine. Now, some people, they shove something down the carb or something down the exhaust. And I've been advised against it because you can damage the engine. So we just get a pair of mole grips and clamp it over the flywheel. You do mark the flywheel a little bit, but no big deal. Better than wrecking your engine. Next, we need to get on the clutch shoes. Ow. Hold on. I know a better way. Ready, ready, ready. So there, look, we can see a gap. So I think we've got too many shims, so we can take one out. So to hold it all on, it comes with these little cap head, whatever they're called, screws here. However, I'm going to fit one of these because you can do them up tighter and less likely to strip off. If you can't get this wrench in at the angles, I've got one here. It's got a ball on the end of it. There we go. We've got the mesh all set. Now, I should have probably got this clutch bell a little bit further in, but... It's making full contact, it'll do. And I'm not in it, am I? Next, the exhaust. Next, we've got to put on the fuel lines. And I've got this little trick here from Mick Raddock that you put these here over the top of the fuel line like on this buggy here that Mick's building for me and it helps secure them on a bit better. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> what? I don't actually know how he got it over the top of that. All right, worry about that later. So now with all that lot in, we now need to make up the linkages. Man, everything on this build just fits together perfectly. Here we have the air filter. All right, we're nearly done. So all we gotta do now is set up the radio, fit some wheels and tires and paint the body. So we've got the window masks on. Next, we've got to rough up the surface so the paint's got somewhere to stick to, then degrease it. Then we're gonna paint it with the legendary red, back it with the white and boom. And what the white does, it just makes the red pop a little bit more. Oh, we're looking good, guys. Now, here we've got the stickers. However, there's no stickers for grill and headlights. Don't know why. Being a racer, they're probably expecting people to paint it on. And in case you're wondering what the other car's been on the bench, this one here is an Inferno. What is it? An MP10 30th anniversary. This one's got all nice aluminium bits on there, carbon fibre parts, carbon fibre towers, a few other bits and bobs. This car's also going to be on this channel, maybe before or after this one. Not sure yet what order the videos are going to be in. So, you know, just do that so you don't miss it. And smash that, because then you'll be notified when new videos get uploaded. Boom! Starter box has just turned up. Also got some wheels and tyres. So these are not going to be any good for racing. However, for running in and for the first couple of runs, perfect. So here we've got an armour infraction sticker sheet. So I think maybe we can use some of the lights from this one. Not perfect, but sometimes you've got to make use of what you've got. Now 
All right, let's have a look at this starter box. So on the top here, we have a wheel. So the idea is that you get your RC, chuck it on top, push down and start your engine. So that flywheel here turns the engine over underneath here. So we need to get this stuff here and put it on top of the starter box. These pins here, they locate on the chassis and it means when you put your buggy on top of the starter box, it lines up every time. There we go, these pins locate it nicely. So now the flywheel in there lines up. So just a little bit of wiring in here to convert it over to a 3S LiPo. Normally they want the old school 7.2 volts in there. But anyway, shut the lid, buggy on and... Boom! So next up, let's get some fuel in the tank and try and get it running for the first time. Now, I haven't got the best track record for looking after these nitro engines. So on this one, I'm going to make a bit more of an effort. So here I'm making an effort to give it like an initial tune up before running it in. So now I've just bound the radio to the receiver. I didn't bother filming it because it took me bleeding ages. I've really struggled finding myself around this radio. If I'd have filmed it, it would have been like an hour long video. You lot would have got bored and clicked away. But anyway, it's all bound up now. Servos are working. I've got the horns off. So now the servo's in the middle position. We can go ahead put the horns on so they're nice and straight a bit of blue lock tight to stop it all from coming loose so there we go steering throttle brakes now i need to go back in here somehow figure out how we can do the endpoints and trims uh i'm gonna put you back on when i've done it because this is gonna take ages all right done it man finding myself around this radio is so difficult so just to find the end point the end point is how far the servo goes you don't want the servo going too far and forcing the throttle and the brakes and the steering so you have to set the end point and normal radio is just called end point in this they call it EPA high and EPA B. It's difficult to find. Look, they put it in some setting called base. But anyway, we've done it now. So there we've got the steering. Full travel, both ways. Throttle and brake. We're getting full throttle. And full brakes with no binding. Right, let's take it out for a little drive. Run in the engine. Get the hang of driving it. And the next video with this car is going to be taking it to my first race meeting. With no help from anyone helping set it up or anything. Just me doing it however I think is best. And then Mick Craddock's going to come along, the RC racing guru. He's going to give it a professional setup, give me some professional tips. And then we're going to see how well I can do with a properly set up car. Right, enough waffle. Let's go and have some fun. Right, here we are on location. We're going to run it in. We're going to try and drive it nicely. Over there, look. The skate park. So full throttle, block the exhaust, prom the engine. <laughs> Jesus. Hopefully you'll go. <laughs> that easy. <laughs> We gotta run it in. Hopefully, Mick's not watching because my running in procedure is not really how you're supposed to run them in. Flat out. <laughs> Bit in the bottom. Fucking gut punch. That's it. Done. Run in. Run it in fast. It'll be fast. I think that noise is just a tight differentials bedding in. Hopefully it's going to go away soon. Man, that Pico is running so nice. Listen to that power. Man, these Kyosho Show racing kits, they handle so much better than any of those bashers out there.
Easy. Oh, no, Carried away. Max wants to go, but he's gonna be worse than me. Next video, we're gonna take it racing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the minute he takes control, it dies. I'm telling you something. <laughs>